All footage that's in this video is mine, unless I specify otherwise via titling. And all footage was taken in New York State, except for some of the footage that was not mine. I had also edited most of the footage that was and was not taken by me. When people think of New York, they typically think of skyscrapers, electric billboards, homeless people shitting in cardboard boxes, and high crime rates. But that only describes a tiny portion of the state. The rest of it mainly consists of farmland, meadows, forests, and mountain ranges. When people think of animals that are native to New York, they usually only think of Governor Andrew Cuomo. And let's be honest, nobody actually likes that douchebag. But when I think of animals that are native to New York, I think of snakes because they're obviously my favorite. This state isn't really known for its snake population, of course, but that's why I'd like to inform you about it. Many people are unaware of how many snakes actually inhabit this huge northeastern chunk of land. And I'm here to show you all 17 species and relentlessly monologue about them, just like any other obsessive autistic little shit. And I really do have mid-level autism, by the way. In case you weren't already able to tell somehow. The cool thing about New York is that it's very large and has such a wide variety of regions, which include the breathtaking hills of the Hudson Highlands, the conglomerate cliffs of the Shawangunk Ridge, the extraordinary rock formations of the Dover Plains region, the Taconic Mountains that border part of the east end of the state, the beautiful and underrated southern Catskills, the lonely and secluded northern Catskills, the deep woodland of the monstrous Adirondack Mountains, the majestic plains of the Finger Lakes region, and all of the miscellaneous wetlands and farmland that are in between. This variety of scenery is especially great for the snake population of New York, because since many individual snake species are unique to their preferences of terrain, the variety of terrain is proportionate to the variety of snake species that inhabit it. The common garter snake seeks out no particular setting, as long as it can access food, shelter, water, and proper warmth. This, and the fact that its diet is so diverse, are why it is New York State's most common snake species. Fish, earthworms, frogs, tadpoles, slugs, snails, and small rodents are all on the menu for the common garter snake, and its tolerance to low temperatures is remarkable. I've even seen one that was active during the early spring while it was still roughly only 40 degrees Fahrenheit. They're rather small on average, but I've seen a few individuals that measured up to approximately 3 feet in length. Common garter snakes are divided into several subspecies, and two of which are native to New York, the eastern garter snake and the maritime garter snake. The easterns are significantly more common and the yellow stripe that covers the middle of the dorsal side of the snake is brighter on them, whereas on the maritime, it's rather dull, and there's a difference in the head shape as well. But the most significant visual trait of the maritime garter snake is the bold brown checkerboard pattern. Easterns have the checkerboard pattern as well, but it's significantly more difficult to detect. Eastern garters are thought to be a complex of maritime and other common garter snake species. By the way, no footage of the maritime garter snake was shown here. These are all easterns. I obtained no footage of any maritime garter snakes, nor could I find any good footage of them on the internet. The common garter snake is found in all regions of New York State. It's a fair presumption that the northern water snake is the second most common snake in New York State. They're rather large, measuring up to approximately 4 feet in length, and they prefer to inhabit bodies of water, which can be ponds, rivers, lakes, anywhere else that consist of its- Will you shut the fuck up, please? The wind, it won't stop blowing. Which can be ponds, rivers, lakes, and anywhere else that consist of its diet. They feed mainly on aquatic animals, such as fish, frogs, newts, and tadpoles, but they're fully capable of eating rodents as well. The northern water snake is very defensive in comparison to a lot of New York's other snake species. If it's caught, attacked, or stepped on, it will musk and struggle to get away, but it will probably not hesitate to bite the living shit out of you. The saliva of water snakes has mildly anticoagulant properties, yet it isn't dangerous to a human, just annoying. They're native to the majority of New York State, lacking populations in most of the Adirondacks and some of the western parts of the northern Catskills.
The eastern milk snake is one of the more reclusive snakes of New York State. Discovering one that's basking in the sunlight or laying on a warm road does happen, but it's rare. However, finding one underneath cover, such as rocks, logs, and debris, is fairly common. The eastern milk snake can grow up to roughly three feet in length, and an adult feeds primarily on rodents, but it occasionally will hunt frogs, fish, lizards, and other snakes as well. They're members of the king snake genus, Lampropeltus, and king snakes are known for eating other snakes, but I've come across large eastern milk snakes and smaller eastern garter snakes sharing the same cover object and there seemed to be no hostility between them, well, as far as I can see, anyway. The eastern milk snake is rather widespread, as it's native to every part of the state except for most of the central and northern parts of the Adirondack Mountains. The eastern black rat snake is the longest snake of New York State, measuring up to circa 6 feet. Adults are primarily black with some white or gray areas, yet they're born with a pattern that slightly resembles that of an eastern milk snake. Some individuals are rather docile, whereas others don't take any shit from anybody. There doesn't really seem to be any consistency in their temperament. The black rat snake is extremely muscular compared to most other native snakes due to the fact that they kill their prey via constriction, which stops the circulation of said prey's blood and suffocates them. They seem to prefer to inhabit wooded areas as they tend to climb trees but they can also be found on farmland, in fields, and even suburban areas. The black rat snake feeds primarily on rodents and birds, and they're native to about half of New York, covering the Hudson Highlands, Southern Catskills, Northern Catskills, Adirondacks, and various other locations. The northern black racer is the fastest snake of New York State, and for that reason, fleeing from a threat serves as a very effective defense mechanism. But if it's caught, it will not hesitate to bite. They are, by far, the most violently defensive snake species of New York, as they bite more than any other. Most snakes will calm down after being handled for a certain duration, but the northern black racer never seems to stop biting, and their teeth are rather large for a snake. They prefer to inhabit mountains and areas that are near bodies of water, but they can also be found in a variety of other types of habitat. The northern black racer feeds mainly on lizards, rodents, frogs, and other snakes, and they're native to most of the Hudson Valley region, as well as Long Island. And there are also a few isolated populations in the Finger Lakes region, the Adirondacks, and various other locations. The DK's brown snake is one of New York's most docile snakes, as it seems to never bite in defense. They're rarely ever seen by the average person because they tend to live under cover objects for the majority of their lives, feeding mainly on slugs and snails. The DK's brown snake is very small, measuring up to approximately 12 inches in length. 
They prefer to inhabit fields, woodland, and many other types of habitat that contain lots of cover objects, such as rocks and logs. The DK's brown snake is native to most of New York State, lacking in a lot of the northern parts of the Adirondack Mountains and some parts of the northern Catskills. The northern red belly snake shares a lot of traits with the DK's brown snake, such as its habitat preferences, tendencies to be under cover objects, temperament, and diet. Its appearance seems to slightly resemble that of a DK's brown snake as well, but the northern red belly snake, of course, typically has a red or orange underside, but some individuals lack this trait. It displays its underside when it's threatened, because bright colors on reptiles often indicate venom or poison even though the northern red belly snake is pretty much harmless. It's native to the majority of New York, lacking populations in some of the northern Catskills and a few other parts of the southern portion of the state. The shorthead garter snake is one of the most intriguing snake species in New York, due to the fact that very little is known about them, for some unknown reason. I've never found a shorthead garter snake, and nobody seems to have uploaded decent footage of one to YouTube, so this must mean that they're extremely rare. The only recorded findings of the shorthead garter snake within New York were in the western portion of the state, south of the Finger Lakes. The ribbon snake closely resembles the common garter snake. And even though many people state that it isn't actually a member of the garter snakes, it is of the garter snake genus, Thamnophis, and I consider anything that's a member of that genus to be a garter snake. There are two subspecies of ribbon snake in New York State, the eastern ribbon snake and the northern ribbon snake. Aside from the bright stripe, the northern ribbon snake's dorsal side is usually mainly black, whereas that of an eastern ribbon snake is brown. Ribbon snakes feed mainly on fish, frogs, and other aquatic life, which is why they tend to inhabit bodies of water and the surrounding habitat. They grow to about the length of the common garter snake, and they're native to most of New York, lacking populations in the majority of the Adirondacks, some of the northern Catskills, a lot of the Finger Lakes region, and a few other areas. The northern ringneck snake is one of the most vibrant snakes of New York, because even though its dorsal side is gray, it's very iridescent, and the underside is a very bright and high saturation orange or yellow, which, just like the northern red belly snake, is used as a defense mechanism. It feeds mainly on salamanders, which is why it shares some of their same habitat. It prefers to inhabit woodland with lots of rocks. They tend to stay underneath cover for the majority of their lives, because their skin is rather fragile compared to most other snakes, and they prefer to be underneath shale as opposed to any other form of rock, and they prefer the soil to be soft and rich as well. The northern ringneck snake is rather small, measuring up to only circa 12 inches in length. They're native to most of New York, lacking populations around Lake Ontario and the majority of the Adirondack Mountains. The eastern worm snake, just like the DK's brown snake, northern red belly snake, and northern ringneck snake, spends most of its life under cover, as it prefers to inhabit woodland with lots of rocks and logs. The eastern worm snake feeds primarily on earthworms, which its appearance actually slightly resembles, and it's rather small, measuring up to only circa 12 inches in length. 
It's native to some parts of the Hudson Highlands, a very small portion of Albany County, and some parts of Long Island. The queen snake, being endangered, is one of the rarest snakes of New York State. Interestingly, they feed only on recently molted crayfish, which is mainly why they inhabit only creeks and rivers, typically with fast currents and lots of rocks. They're rather small on average, but they can be as long as about three feet. The queen snake is native to a few rivers and creeks in the western portion of New York. The eastern hognose is probably the most unique snake in New York State, as it has such a wide variety of defense mechanisms. Like most snakes, when threatened, the eastern hognose snake will musk and flatten its body in pursuit of appearing to be larger, but unlike most other snakes, it will play dead very convincingly and even flatten its and widen its neck, just as a cobra would do. But even though it also tends to tap the threat with its bizarre looking snout, it won't actually open its mouth to bite. The eastern hognose snake, despite all of these unique defense mechanisms, won't even bite in defense. It feeds mainly on toads, but it will also eat rodents. The eastern hognose snake prefers to inhabit areas that contain lots of sand or soft soil, and it's native to most of the southern portion of New York and uh, some of the Albany area. The smooth green snake is the only snake of New York that's green, and needless to say, that they're actually really difficult to find because of how well they blend in with the surrounding vegetation. They feed mainly on crickets, grasshoppers, and caterpillars, but they'll also eat spiders, centipedes, slugs, snails, and small amphibians. The smooth green snake inhabits bodies of water mountains, fields, and farmland, and they're native to most of New York, lacking populations in the Hudson Highlands and some parts of the Adirondacks. There are three venomous snakes in New York State. One of them is the Eastern Massasauga Rattlesnake. The Eastern Massasauga is the only endangered venomous snake in New York, and there's actually very little hope for the survival of their native populations, unfortunately. They feed mainly on rodents, but they'll also feed on frogs and other snakes as well. The Eastern Massasauga inhabits fields and swampland, and they're native to only a few small areas in the western portion of New York. The northern copperhead is the only venomous snake of New York that's considered by the DEC to be abundant, and it's actually the least harmful of the three as well. 
A bite from the northern copperhead can kill a child, an individual that's allergic to the venom, or somebody that has a preposition to blood-related medical issues. But other than those cases, a bite from a copperhead won't kill a human. They're rather rare unless you're actively searching for them in their desired habitat, which is typically in or near mountainous regions. The northern copperhead feeds mainly on lizards, but it will also feed on other snakes, birds, amphibians, and even cicadas. They're native to the Hudson Highlands, some of the southern Catskills, and some of the northern Catskills, and in addition to that, there are a few isolated populations in other regions of southeastern New York and the Albany region. And the timber rattlesnake is the only one of New York's three venomous snakes that I was able to entirely film for this video. And since they're commonly poached for their skin and for the pet trade, none of the views from the mountains that are included in this video are associated with the findings of these rattlesnakes, as I always keep from sharing the location of rattlesnakes and copperheads. In New York, they strictly inhabit only mountainous regions, and they feed primarily on rodents. The timber rattlesnake is, in my opinion, the most interesting snake of New York, due to its unique behavior. Like all other snakes of New York, they'll spend the winter underground below the frost line, but what's interesting about the timber rattlesnake is that they have a very specific and unique yearly routine. In the winter and late fall, they'll hibernate in a den, and that den needs to be a rock formation that's on the side of the mountain that's facing southward, southeastward, or southwestward. And the rattlesnakes seem to choose one of the same small number of dens per mountain each year, except for a few individuals that stray from the rest and choose their own. During late May, the gravid or pregnant timber rattlesnakes will travel to a very specific area on the mountain that's exposed to the sun, and they'll stay there until August or early September, and that's when they'll give birth to their live young, before returning to their dens for hibernation season. Timber rattlesnakes can reach circa 5 feet in length, and they're native to the Hudson Highlands, Southern Catskills, Northern Catskills, few areas in the Finger Lakes region, some of the eastern portion of the Adirondack Mountains, the Dover region, and one small isolated population that's somewhere in Montgomery County. All right, I think that that's it. I'm, I'm kind of pissed off. My throat hurts. I'm hungry. Let me just get out of here.